dialect, my name is Jeanette, and I have been putting videos on YouTube for the past year. God has revealed to me now. He wants me to reveal my face. He um, is ready to anoint his priesthood under the high priest Melchizedek. There is so much that I want to uh, say to you and what has been revealed to me. Um, my introduction um, with you, um, I want to read to you what I wrote so I um, will make sure that everything that I want to say to you will be said. So I'm going to read uh, it to you. God has called me forth and anointed me to prepare his people. He is ready to anoint his elect into their priestly duties under the high priest Melchizedek. You will be visited. He will wake you up in your sleep. You will hear like church bells. They will ring twice as a double witness. This will be um, your invitation to the wedding. This is when God will become one with his um, with his elect as in the first day the uh, uh, the this is the marriage between um, man and spirit you will then um, see a vision of a man sleeping with breath being blown on him this will be the breath of the that will quicken you make you spiritually alive your eyes will then be open to the spiritual realm. You will be able to see with spiritual eyes and hear with spiritual ears. Without this marriage, uh, you, you will still be in the flesh. You have to take on the spiritual man to be a part of his Levitical priesthood of the end days. This will be the breath of life that will quicken you, make you spiritually alive. Your eyes will be open to receive the spiritual manna that has been reserved for you. We are to obey his commands to be a part of his priesthood. You must be of the spirit listening to the commands through the high priest Melchizedek. Once the four winds are released upon this earth god's holy spirit will be withdrawn it will only be in those that heeded the invitation and took of the marriage all information at that point will be given to his two witnesses the high priest melchizedek his voice peace on earth and then the two witnesses will relay all that information to his elect and the elect will relay it to the 144,000. Many will be called, but few are chosen because they will refuse the messenger. If you have stumbled upon my channel, this is your divine appointment. He will seek his elect and gather them from the four corners. This is the morning. The morning is the time of the spirit. And God called the light as an illumination, spiritual intellect, day, and the darkness as in misery, wickedness, obscurity, as in the state of being unknown and hidden, he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The first day as when we were celestial. God's elect were of the first day, and they will be born last. Abraham rose up early in the morning, and when he went to take Isaac to be sacrificed, Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows, and he set up a pillar, and he poured oil upon the top of it. When Moses was to meet with Pharaoh, it was in the morning. O Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh morning by morning. He waketh my ear to hear as to be learned. God's children receive manna in the morning. At evening you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God.
This is the thing, as in one way, which the Lord hath commanded, Gather it of every man according to his eaten, an omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take you every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and they gathered some more and some less. That's depending on your spiritual appetite. And when they did meet it, it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms, and it stank, and Moses was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. This message of truths, as in the thing, as in meaning one way, the manna, one voice, one message, will be received in the morning. You are then to take it into your being and digest upon it and let the Spirit reveal to you the message given. God's children will be nourished if they accept of this thing and not turn to the flesh. They have to listen to the commands of the high priest at this time. When you receive the breath, you will know then that you are anointed into the holy place. You have received of your priestly garment. I, Jesus, thou has sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. But that when you have already hold fast till I come, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations." And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. They be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that have ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. The royal priesthood of which Christ is the head capstone received their priestly anointing from the high priest. Now of the things we have spoken, this is the sum we have such a priest who is set at the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. Many are called, but few are chosen. Few will be chosen because they will refuse to listen to the high priest that Jesus will set up on this earth. This will be his mouthpiece to his people, just as Moses was, through Aaron. Moses representing of a type of Christ, and Aaron as the high priest Melchizedek, his mouthpiece. The high priest will come to the holiest of holies first, releasing of their fleshly garment, putting on the wedding garment, their priestly robe. Then he will lead the elect, the first fruits to the marriage well they, where they will become one in spirit also releasing of their fleshly garment, putting on their wedding garment, their priestly robe. You cannot be in his kingdom without this garment. We have to be obedient to his commands. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt as to test Abraham. God's elect will be tested. And he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take thy son. The son is the builder of the family, a son being of the flesh. The daughter is of the spirit. Thy only son Isaac, whom thy lovest, and get thee, get thee as to walk into the land of Moriah, Moriah meaning seen of Yah, being Bethel, the house of God, and offer him there for a burnt offering uh, upon one as to be united as one upon the mountains, mountains as a promotion, um, as ascending um, stairs, uh, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. This is the morning. And he saddled his ass, and he took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering. And he rose up, and he went into the place which God had told him. We are to listen to what God tells us to do. And on the third day, third as in the Holy Spirit, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place afar off. 
he was able to see it his from the holy spirit and abraham said unto his young men abide you here with the ass and i and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and he laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and he said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son, and he said, Behold the fire and the wood, and where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and he laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and he laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and he took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. Abraham knew God's plan to sacrifice his son, but even though he did not question he did what the Lord asked of him. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thy anything unto him. For now I know that thy fear is God, seeing that has not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and behold him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering instead of his son. Um... We, as God's elect, each will be tested. He will see who, who will listen, even though and who will not. We must present ourselves as living sacrifices unto the Lord's purpose. Uh, God's Son, Jesus Christ, went before us, becoming the first begotten, as in spiritual, spiritual man, taking off the flesh, dying to the flesh, and taking on the spiritual man. We also must come to sacrifice our flesh at the altar, taking off the fleshly garment and putting on the spiritual garment. And Abraham called the name of that place Yahweh Jari, as he is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen, meaning Yahweh will see to it, a symbolic name for Mount Moriah. Many will refuse this invitation because of their pride and not expect accepting of the lowly vessel that this message will come through. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king which made a marriage for his son. This is our heavenly father bidding us to become one with his son. And he sent forth his servants, these are his elect um, that come first, to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. He's bidden them. This is, this is the bidding. And again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, behold, I prepared my dinner and my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. And they went their ways. We are to walk in his ways. And one to his farm and another to his merchandise, as in his own teachings. And the remnant, which are the falling angels, took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. They were able to, sl to slay them spiritually because they did not have the wedding garment on. And when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies, and he destroyed those murderers, and he burned up their city. And then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go you therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and they gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on the wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen." because they refuse the invitation. They do not have the wedding garment, the spiritual body. 
Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You must put on the spiritual body by dying to flesh. This takes place at the wedding when we become spiritually one with Christ. This was a friend, the ones that work for Christ in truth. They refused the invitation. They did not have the spiritual body to stand with him in the spirit. God chooses his priesthood. He will seek you out. This will be the instruments where the full total revelation and manifestation of Jesus Christ and all its glory, wisdom, and power and authority and might. This being of the seven spirits, which will be the manifestation of the spiritual complete man, 777. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. They will see and hear the true Levitical priesthood set up by the Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest Melchizedek. The voice peace of Jesus Christ on this earth being the two witnesses. God is in you of a truth and God will be glorified in them. The divine appointment has come, and no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Moses being a type of Savior, Jesus Christ, and Aaron being his spokesman. Just as Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the high priest Melchizedek, as Aaron, his mouthpiece to the people. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, How Thy art my son, today have I begotten thee. Thy art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, and also true of his priestly house, they are called of God. And we know that all things work together for God to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, for whom did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, he did predestinate them, he also called, and whom he called them, he also justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Thy has made us unto our God, kings and priests. There are three entrances in the tabernacle in the wilderness, the realm of the priestly ministry. The gate in the outer court, the door into the holy place, and the veil into the holiest of all. The veil was the barrier preventing one from entering in without approval into the fullness of God and the priestly ministry. Only the chosen ones were permitted entrance and only the anointed high priest into the holiest place. By a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple, as in Jesus Christ his flesh, was rent in the midst, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, that is releasing of the flesh taking on the spirit. The barrier that holds the flesh, the Gentile man, into the uh, outer court, the gate of the outer court, instead of coming into the door of the holy place. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and seventy of the elders of Israel and worship, worship you afar off. Seventy of the elders representing of God's elect. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Moses alone, he being the voice of our high priest Melchizedek, the voice piece of God on this earth, and Moses and came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice. And they said, all the words which the Lord has said, we will do. They are now in one accord, one membered body of spirit filled people. They understand they are to listen to the one voice. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and he rose up early in the morning. 
and he built an altar under the hill in 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and he put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Basins as in a, as in a bowl and the two olive trees by it upon the right side of the bowl and on the other upon the left side thereof. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I... I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and its seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the lamps which are upon the top thereof. And he took the book of the covenant and he read in the audience of the people and they said all that the Lord has said we will do and we will be obedient. This, um, They are obedient to the to the two witnesses and Moses took the blood and he sprinkled it on the people and he said behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord had made with you concerning all these words this is bringing about the anointing of the priesthood then went o Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and they saw the God of Israel and there was under his feet as it were paved work as in whiteness of a sapphire stone and as it were the body of heaven in its clearness and upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand also they saw God and they did eat and drink they um, they are now up able to approach God being one in spirit they're eating and drinking as in the marriage and the Lord said unto Moses come up unto me into the mount and be there and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thy mayest teach them this would be the testimony and Moses rose up and his minister Joshua and Moses went up into the mount of God and he said unto the elders which are the uh, elect tarry you here for us until we come again unto you and behold Aaron and her are with you if any man have any matters to do let them come unto them as in judges and Moses went up into the mount and a cloud covered the mount uh, and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And in the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Seven, as in rest, abode spiritual completeness. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. This will be the test time for his elect to see who he can trust and the Lord spoke unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel and take every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers and all their princes according to the house of their fathers twelve rods write every man's name upon his rod and they shall write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi the one rod shall be for the head of the house of their father, and they shall lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass, the man's rod who I shall choose shall blossom, and I will make to cease from the murmurings of the children of Israel. Whereby they murmur against you and Moses, speak unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave them a rod apiece for each prince one according to their father's houses even twelve rods and the rod of Aaron was among their rods and Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of the witness which means testimony and behold the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloomed blossoms and yielded almonds and Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto the children of Israel and they looked and took every man his rod but it means to break forth flourish and yielded almonds and almond tree is the earliest to bloom almond means shakad it comes from the root that means to watch awaken up from a winter sleep the word of god came unto me saying jeremiah what do you see and i said i see an almond branch then the lord said unto me you have seen well for i am watching over my word to perform it 
The staff of Aaron's rod was made from the branch of the almond tree. Aaron's rod budded, flowered, and produced almonds overnight, which is symbolic of the resurrected priest of God that are coming. It will happen overnight. God chooses Aaron to minister. Behold the day, behold it is come, and the morning has gone forth, a rod as the branch, the scepter for correction has blossomed, meaning to flourish. Pride is budded, meaning to break forth. He that received his testimony, meaning evidence given, has set his seal as to stamp with a signet for security, uh, preservation, preservation by implication to be kept secret that God is true. Aaron's rod had budded and brought forth blossoms and almonds, but none of the other rods had budded. This example shows that the new covenant ministry set up by our high priest Melchizedek is to be executed by only those chosen by the Lord by reason of the anointing. This memorial to the fact that God alone chooses his priesthood and anoints whom he will and those that the Lord calls are blessed with his spirit illustrated to us by the building the budding of rod of Aaron in contrast with the rod of the other 11 princes of Israel God's elect the Levitical priesthood of the end days under the high priest Melchizedek will come forth first taking on the spiritual man moving into the door of the holy place from the outer court where the Gentile man was to remain they can only move through that door if they're called and anointed into the priesthood. And Aaron and his sons, though, shall bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, then shall take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him, and then shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Prepare the table, watch in thy watchtower eat drink arise you princes and anoint the shield and above all take in the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked i am come to moses to point him as a prophet to lead the people out of bondage aaron which became the high priest spoke for i am moses being a type of christ the deliverer the priesthood will speak we are to do whatever I am commands of us. He is our high priest under the order of Melchizedek. We are his friends. He knows us. He has brought us to this place at this time. He is ready to anoint us to his service. He has ordained us to bring about the deliverance of his people and to pronounce the acceptable day of our Lord. We will shine forth as gold. We are ordained. We are anointed. We are sent because we are chosen. We are in his vine, we are one with I am. They will hate us because they will see I am in us, and they will hear I am in our speech. But we are prepared, we are now in the spirit because we tarried with him, we listened to his commands to go to Bethel. We climbed up the staircase where I am waits for us at the top stone. We are no longer in the flesh, we are in the vine and the sap feeds through our veins. The spirit of the Lord thy God we will not deny. We understand that Peter was in the flesh when he denied Christ. But we have the spirit that was bestowed upon Peter to build the church, the many-membered body ordained by Jesus Christ himself. But we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you shall show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are that church, we are the royal priesthood, we are the elect, we are the apostles. Then take Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment, the ointment being myrrh, which is perfumed oil. Myrrh means to distill in drops, and myrrh also means bitter. Myrrh is a small tree with bushy branches bearing a plum-like fruit that produces a gum which is very fragrant. When this gum flows after it's pierced, it resembles a teardrop. Myrrh was used for embalming the preparation of, of burial. The Jewish custom was to treat the body with myrrh. 
myrrh is to be ground into a powder, meaning beet, which will make it into a fine dust. Myrrh is then distilled into a liquid. In Hebrew, meaning distilling in drops, and every drop is symbolic of the tears that is kept bottled. I will dwell in the holy place with him. Also, that is of a contrite mind and a humble spirit. Contrite means to be crushed to powder, as in feeling remorse, guilt, and broken. When the resin of myrrh is crushed into powder, it is transformed and recognized by its fragrance alone. The powder of myrrh is then transformed into usable drops that is purified and perfected for the holy anointing oil. The contrite and humble spirit is found in the anointing oil because the ingredients go through a particular crushing process to be fit for their ministry and the holiest of holies. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples says unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. As to disintegrate to powder, that becomes the liquid myrrh in its pure state. The taste of myrrh is bitter, just as the best myrrh teardrop resins are hand-selected and set apart and used for the priesthood to minister to the Lord. This season of refinement takes place in us to bring forth the consecrated gifts and the umption of the Holy Spirit. Before this happens, we are the ingredients of myrrh in its raw state, just waiting for something bigger than we are. The refining comes with intimacy with the Lord, studying of his word and being obedient drop by drop. And by being obedient, we will, be, we will perfect our walk with our Lord, our ministry and our character to a level that will bring forth the pure glory of God and the anointing of the priesthood under our high priest Melchizedek. I've come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey, and I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink ye. Drink abundantly, O oh beloved. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It's the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of the night. I have put off my coat, shall I put it on? I have washed my feet, how shall I defile them? My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. I rose up to open to my beloved, and my hands dropped with myrrh, and my fingers with sweet-smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock. These words were only for the Shulamite woman. Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, and his words are only for his sent ones. They are set apart, and his words drop on them like liquid myrrh in the language of the prophetic. The priests of the Old Testament were set apart to hear the word of the Lord and present this word to the people. And he has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Many are called, but few are chosen. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauty of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thy has the dew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thy art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen, he shall fill the places with the dead bodies, and he shall wound the heads over many countries, and he shall drink of the brook and the way, therefore shall he lift up the head. God is preparing a priesthood, they are a people that know the voice of their father, and they look to no man. They have an understanding of Elijah's ministry and how it's to lead them to their priesthood. They are equipped with the gospel armor, and they carry the sword of the Lord, and they are skilled with it. With the sword, they can build you up with it, or they can cut you down with it if need be. They do not apologize because they have been trained by their master. They are a people who follow their shepherd. They know he is the door of their knowledge, and they can freely graze and be protected by him without fear. 
And because of their faith in him and knowing he is their door, they have been well fed. They are the Levitical priesthood raised up for the end days. They do not look to no man priest because their priest is the Melchizedek, the king of the just. Lazarus means Eleazar in Hebrew. Eleazar was the third son of Aaron that revived the priesthood. Jesus rose Lazarus, representing the priesthood from the dead for his glory. It will be Christ that revives the Levitical priesthood back in the be into being. Jesus instituted a new order of priesthood under the order of Melchizedek, which is both king and priest. There is only one king and only one priest, not many, as in Aaron the priesthood under Aaron, but one, Jesus Christ. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. God's elect, the royal priesthood, are those that trust in I am. As their high priest, his priesthood will bring down his enemies. We are, not, we are to let go of anything that will apprehend this calling that Christ has called us to. We are to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. That same voice that called you to worship is now calling you to apply your gospel armor and come in war with him. To take your position in the battlefield. To be prepared and watch. Pick up your mantle of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And walk in his dominion because he will go before us. There's a battle on the horizon. And there's a many-membered body of people suiting up with their gospel armor and arming themselves with the sword of the Lord that they are highly trained to use. It is furbished and ready for their battle call. Their commander-in-chief is the Lord Jesus Christ, the voice of our high priest Melchizedek, and only him do they obey and follow. When they hear their battle call, they will march and nobody will be able to stand in their way. They have been tried with the fire, and they stand proven. They are now endowed with the power on high, the Holy Spirit. It is the torch that lights their way. The heavenly host encamps around them. The Elijah ministry comes before the coming of our Lord to prepare his people with the latter rain and the preparation for their priesthood and accepting of their gifts that are already in them for the great battle and the anointing of his royal priesthood under the order of Melchizedek. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that I stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. A gift is a divine gratuity that is a deliverance from danger or passion, specifically a spiritual endowment that is a religious qualification or a miraculous facility, a free gift. And behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel, for they are given as a gift for the Lord to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual works of his power, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders, with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will till, ne till next time elect